I was in my late 20s, I think, um, in or early 30s, and in Eastern Africa with some friends on a humanitarian visit. So we were going with a group, uh, with an organization that has the mission to help people help themselves in the most difficult parts of the world. And in this case, we were in um, Somali, Ethiopia. So in Ethiopia, on the Somali border, very dangerous area, um, incredibly poor, all kinds of sort of terrorism infiltration. And there are many organizations, military and civilian, that go to this area of the world to help them support themselves because if they can't support themselves, they are far more likely to be forced to participate in globally dangerous activity. And so it's important, um, it's an important place to, to go be a helper. And we were sitting around with a group of village leaders that had accountability for different areas of village transformation, um, health and hygiene, education, nutrition, water, you know, things like that. And a friend of mine who was there, who had never been to this area of the world, I had done a lot of work in Rwanda prior, but this was my first time in Ethiopia. And a friend of mine asked, uh, okay, we're going to go back and we're going to fundraise for you. And this is a, a matching model. So whatever we raise and contribute philanthropically, they must contribute and then they do the work. And so we said, what are your priorities? Help us tell your story. Help us go back and talk about what you need. And the village leader uh, they speak Amharic. It's the oldest, one of the oldest spoken languages in the world. So everything takes a moment to land because it's got to be translated into two languages to get there. So he asked the question in English. It gets translated. What's your first priority? What are your goals? What's your number one priority? And they, they responded, water. Getting access to water, getting water clean so that we can drink it and use it, getting water to the, the places where the soil is best for um, fruits and vegetables, it's water. And my friend wrote it down and he said, great, um, what's your second and third priorities? Give us a list as so often we as the, as citizens of the developed and privileged world do, right? Give me the list of all the things. And once that got translated back, the question of what's your second priority and what's your third priority, their response needed no translation. It was laughter. And they said, our second priority is water and our third priority is water, and our fourth priority is water. If you build us a school, if you teach us about uh, health, if you provide education, it won't do us any good if we can't get water to our plants, if we can't have clean drinking water, if we don't have access to water. And I thought, it, I mean, in that moment, it was, I was appreciating the, the focus that they had, but I thought to myself, how can I in business have that level of clarity of the one thing that is the most important, that is the greatest enabler, that if you just do the one thing, everything else after it will be more effective. And it was clear because for them, the penalty, the punishment for getting that focus or that priority wrong is pretty severe, right? It's, it's death, it's members of their family having to do horrible things in order to just get that one thing. And so I understood why they were so clear and we in the developed world have all our lists and all our things and we um, <laughs> are paralyzed with indigestion, if you will. And, uh, and, and so it became my mantra, what is my water? How can I look at everything through this lens of forcing myself to at least rack and stack, at least find out in any given moment if I did only one thing, what is the thing that is most likely to enable all the other things? And that has allowed me to bring a level of focus to my personal life. Of course, that one thing is health and wellness. Um, it has allowed me to bring a level of focus to my teams, to how I think about initiatives in the business with fixed resources. And I'm still not amazing at it, but I'm far better because I think, what is my water? How do I force myself to have clarity? And part of it is I have to pretend that the penalties for getting it wrong are more severe than they are. The reality is the penalties for getting it wrong are in fact severe. They lead to long-term damage of teams and companies, but we're so privileged in the developed world that we don't see those penalties as acutely, as quickly as say a village leader in Ethiopia if they spend time building schools versus getting access to water. So what is my water is uh, a phrase or a way to talk about priorities that matter.